Hello and welcome back. Now we get to talk to my friend, uh, Ron Morrison, who is the CEO of a company called Pure Influencer. And hopefully he'll take the time to explain that just a little bit. Uh, but for a lot of our clients, you may or may not have heard of Pure Influencer. And ultimately, they are a wonderful kept secret that we're going to unleash today and, and basically get rid of any mystery because he's got over 600 clients all across North and South America and he's going to cover a lot of ground today that I think will be really helpful for you. So Ron, if you could introduce yourself and uh, take it away. Cool. Well, thanks again, David. Really appreciate for the opportunity for us to be here. Good to uh, see all of you also virtually. Certainly looking forward again to seeing all of my friends in a real uh, conference sometime where we can all sit around, have a cup of coffee or glass of wine, what have you. Also, I learned something new, cool today. I'll get into Pure Influencer thing about in a minute, but welcome to California, David. I just <laughs> learned today that you live in Oakland, Oakland, just up the street from us. So uh, that, that's a lot. That's fun, exciting, and welcome to California. Thank uh, you, Pure much. Influencer. Here's who we are. Uh, we started this name uh, and we started this company with the idea that we wanted to help dealers, you, uh, influence the right audience to engage you. That's what we want to do. And we, we wanted to not have any other sort of distraction or any other agenda other than say, hey, let's influence more of your market to choose to do business with you. That's what we do. And, that, and we partner, like you mentioned, uh, over 600 clients uh, in the U.S. alone uh, from shoreboard to shoreboard. So we're excited about partnering with them. Uh, and we're excited. Much of what I'm going to tell you today uh, or talk about today has to do with what we've learned from our clients over the last you know, seven, eight years. Plus, uh, obviously, you know, sort of the, the ideas and the information that we've had for maybe decades now. So that's what we're going to jump into. And we're going to talk about conversion and, and, and why it matters more uh, in this presentation. Excellent. So are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Oh, okay. I'm going to share the screen. Here we go. All right, so let me switch to that screen right there and I'll share it. And here we go. So conversion matters more. You saw the title. Hopefully it caught your attention. Hopefully you said, hey, this is something I need to check out. Conversion matters more. The question is, conversion matters more than what, right? So we're going to talk about that as well. So conversion matters more than driving traffic. I hope that by the end of the short presentation, you'll agree with me that conversion matters more than driving traffic. By the way, you may know if you follow me on LinkedIn, philosophically and practically, we believe that dealers have more traffic on their website than they know what to do with. Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute as well. But conversion matters more than that. Conversion matters more than vanity metrics, more than any attribution or analytics that you can have. Certainly, you can spend your time pouring over data and looking at what sources drove what sort of visitors on your website or, or what influences there are, but conversion matters more than that. And conversion matters more than any digital ad spend you can make. More than a penny, more than $100,000 in ad spend, conversion should be your first and most important focus. Particularly today in our COVID client, climate, we know that the vast majority of our visitors still remain online, more so than they are out on the lot or more so than they are in our showroom. Um, but it's mattered long ago, it matters now, and it really matters most now uh, and also, uh, here's something that happened in, in uh, 2017, I think it was, Dagan did a study, and by the way, the data is true today. You see it on many different studies. But Dagan was sort of joking around and said, you know, after roughly looking at all nearly 10,000 uh, websites, uh, they found that conversion rate sky skyrocketed to 1.7%. Here's what we're talking about. Your website, your dealer website, as a matter of fact, David, hopefully we'll just treat you in this presentation as Mr. Dealer. So there you go. You've got uh, Kane Automotive mm -hmm. and you're the dealer principal. Congratulations to the part. Welcome to the party. Oh, um, yes. You're welcome. And so your website converts less than 2% of all the monthly unique visitors that you bring. Think about that for a minute. You invest all this time, all this energy, all the meetings with your internal staff, vendors like myself, et cetera, and you certainly invest a ton of money to drive a ton of traffic to solve a problem where the real problem is you only convert 2% of that traffic, particularly in form fills, right? That's what we're talking about here. So what we need to do is consider solving the right problem. Uh, and what I mean by the right problem is if you think about it for a second, um, imagine, if, let's say you, your, 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 your website, David, your dealer website has 10,000 monthly unique visitors, right? And imagine units in inventory, you got four or 500 units in inventory, what have you. 
Imagine if you sold just 20% of the traffic that's on your website. Let's make the argument that half of them are on there for service. So now you got 5,000 visitors that are, are there, right? So let's say you sold only 20% of that uh, in terms of sales opportunities. Let's say you sold 20% this month. You don't have enough inventory. And by the way, you would be out of business. Why? You certainly can't replace that inventory fast enough. The OEM can't. Uh, we certainly know what we're learning today. We can't replace used inventory fast enough. So after your, after your sales staff spent all the money on the big commission checks that they made from selling all the inventory, well, the next month they have to make money too. And the month after that. But there's no inventory in your store. What do they do? And then they vacate to go somewhere, sell somewhere else. And then your managers are gone. And then meanwhile, you slowly got inventory coming. But you don't have any staff anymore. I mean, it would be a mess if you sold even just 20% of your traffic. So your traffic is not a problem. As a matter of fact, there is zero evidence in any tool you use that proves your dealership has a traffic problem. David, you don't have a traffic problem. Neither do any of, of the 16,782 dealers, right? Uh, unless, of course, you are a, you, your, your website was down for, for months, some crazy reason, or uh, you had really terrible inventory issues and you just didn't have traffic in general. But I'm talking about the average dealer. There's zero evidence that proves your dealership has a traffic problem. However, 98.3% of the time, your website, David, fails to convert visitors. 98%. It has a failure rate in excess of 98%. Typically, when I meet dealers like you or dealers around the country, when they find something that fails at 20 or 30 or 40%, they do everything in the world. You do everything in the world to fix that because that's a problem. Well, here's a big problem. Websites in general, and by the way, they're all good. We could list them. Many of them are my friends. They're partners with them, uh, formal partners, et cetera. We, we, we appreciate and value what a website vendor brings to the table. Conversion's not one of the pieces, right? Because consistently across the country, across the board, regardless of the website platform, on average, it fails 98% of the time. That's the problem to solve, right? So the issue is um, when you look at, fixing the conversion problem, you're essentially fixing holes in your net. Imagine, David, you went to some exotic place to go fishing, right? You saw a bunch of fishermen casting nets in the ocean, uh, and you decided you're going to go do that too. And you had a net that had a bunch of holes. And you threw your net in there, and you, you pulled it out, and nah, no fish. Hmm. Today, the parallel to that in automotive retail is ah, no fish. Let me get a bigger net and cast it much further. No, fix the holes in your net. You've got holes in your net, fix the holes in your net, and then you'll catch more fish. So let's talk about that, right? When you convert more visitors to leads on your website, when you improve the conversion rate of your website, you beget more first party leads, which David, I'm pretty sure you would agree like the rest of the dealers who are looking at the show, uh, is that your first party website leads, if you look at your internet leads summary report in your CRM tool and you compare all the various sources, your website, your trade tool, your chat tool, what have you, I'm sure you would agree that your first party website leads close at the highest rate or among the highest rate. They're, the, they're your most valuable leads. Why? Because they produce high appointment rates, they produce high show rates in terms of appointment shows, and they produce high close rates. So they're a valuable source. It's critical that you have first party leads and more first party leads. Um, and because those leads generate more appointments, you generate more sales and it's sort of the whole fuel for your store to drive more units and in inventory from, for your store, right? So, and we have to consider also that highly engaged leads or those leads that you want to convert, they are obviously doing not only their, their homework on your website, but they're doing their homework on other websites as well. If we're to believe Google, and I do, Google tells us that the average buyer visits 5.6 different franchise dealership websites on average during their 32.4 hours shopping online or 70 days, whatever you, however you want to look at that cycle, right? Um, and engaged visitors, they, you know, they exhibit shopping behavior, they have strong buying interest. Uh, of course, they submit lead forms, they make phone calls, but not all visitors on your website are the same. And, and I'm not talking about just sales versus parts versus service visitors. I'm talking about just sales visitors. 
just sales nurses, they're not all the same. Well, think about it. Some of them are coming from various zip codes. Some are on your website at different times at night. Some are coming through from different devices. Some, some are coming through from different referral links, organic, direct, et cetera. Um, and so because they're not the same and because conversion matters more, I'd like you, David, and all of us to maybe write down or screenshot or keep this rule uh, abreast, right? And it's, it's what a rule that I've been calling for years called the 2% conversion rule. And here's the rule. Any 2% increase, any 2% increase in the conversion rate of a highly engaged visitor sells more cars for your dealership, David, than any 20% increase in quality website traffic. Here's why, David. Check this out. So the typical strategy for you at your store, David, generally speaking, and dealers across the country, when you want to drive more sales, generally speaking, you, drop, you try to drive more traffic, all things being equal, right? You feel your training's good, you feel your processes are good, you feel your in inventories, all those sort of different, different silos, if you will, within your business are somewhat out of, are under control and you decide you want to drive more traffic, right? So let's assume you had 10,000 monthly unique visitors and you decide you want to get an increase of 20%, you want to add you know, 2,000 more visitors, right? You just say, hey, I just need more visitors, I, I, I believe that's in the market. Well, what happens is that there's a cost for that, right? So if you're going to drive more visitors and let's say your cost is a $3 per click, let's say you, you try to accomplish that and you, let's say you do, you get 2,000 more visitors. Well, at 2% close rate, we're not going to go to 1.7 because the math is easier, 2%. So at a 2% close rate, you're winning 40 more leads. Let me parenthetically say that those 2,000 visitors, first of all, they have to be quality visitors and visitors that had not nor would not have found your website anyway already, organically. Tough proposition, right? Because of the search engines, et cetera, they make you available. You've got straight, strong brand recognition. You've got great quality score. All those things mean that if somebody's in your market, they're gonna find you whether you like it or not. But let's assume you found more people that somehow couldn't find your website, right? And you found 2,000 of them. Well, that's gonna generate 40 leads. And at a 10% close rate from your BDC, your sales team, et cetera, on industry average, you probably would agree that's going to generate four sales. Okay, so cool. $2,000 at $3 a 2,000 visitors at $3 a click, that's $6,000, right? That's your budget. That's the spend that you had in your given search engine. You divide that by the four sales and you go, hey, it's $1,500 per unit sold. Mm -hmm. Hang on. Four sales at $2,000 gross, hey, you made eight grand, right? The typical uh, young um, marketing vendor is going to say, hey, you made eight grand gross. Come on. We're talking net dollars versus gross, but that's a whole nother subject. But now at four, at $8,000 rather, let's take a look. When you subtract the $6,000 that it cost you, you maybe got $2,000 gross. Hmm. Maybe. And by the way, those are net dollars that you spend against gross dollar calculation. Kind of offset, right? So that's the typical strategy that we see in the market today. Why does converting more matter? Okay. Let's take a look at the same 10,000 monthly unique visitors. We know that in those visitors, before the increase, we know there's engaged visitors, right? We know there's service visitors, we know there's parts visitors, we know there's tire kickers, we know there's highly engaged visitors. We know that, right? So let's take a look at what that looks like. So now 10,000 monthly unique visitors, 2,000 of them at least are highly engaged visitors on your site. By highly engaged, what I mean, generally speaking, is they're investing a lot of time in different inventory units, search result pages. They're, they're investing time on your competitor sites. They're returning to your sites. There's multiple visits. They're going through that process. That typically happens toward the middle, near the end of their sales cycle, where they're very highly engaged, right? So, uh, and like we talked about before, not all visitors are the same. There's about 20% that are highly engaged, right? So what happens when we take a conversion strategy? Well, all right. So if we want to raise our conversion rate by two points, right? So we want to go from 2% to potentially 4%. We're going to work with the engaged visitors that we already have. So if we're going to do that, now we're going to win 80 leads, right? 80. Instead of going from 2% conversion, we're at 4% conversion. We got 80 leads. That's eight sales with your 10% close rate with your existing deal, your existing team rather. So now effective conversion platforms, you can get them in the market anywhere, on average about $1,000. I've seen them low as $200, I've seen them as high as $1,600. Conversion platforms uh, work all sorts of different ways, we're one of a dozen, right? Um, that's not the point, the point here is, on average you can invest about $1,000 for a quality conversion platform tool. 
Now, what, what's that gonna do for you? Okay, $1,000, eight sales, that's $125 per unit sold, much better. Eight sales at $2,000, that's $16,000 gross. And you subtract that $1,000 cost, that's a $15,000 gross gain. Let's look at them side by side so that it's clear for you. The existing drive more strategy potentially gets you $2,000. And that's if those 2,000 incremental visitors, if you could get incremental visitors, if they were interested in your brand, if they were quality, if they weren't already part of your website visitor mix, meaning you're not cannibalizing those visitors. So those are a lot of ifs. But if you could find 2,000 more, you get $2,000 gross. Or if you focus on just converting the traffic that you already have, converting those, high, identifying the highly engaged visitor, which visitor on my, my site is more engaged than other, using artificial intelligence to do that, and then converting that visitor, you're gonna get now potentially $15,000, significantly more, right? So let's prove it, David. I'm gonna take you through an exercise with a spreadsheet that if you want for your store, you can have it, uh, and I'll even walk you through how to use it as well. But let's just jump over here to this, this spreadsheet, okay. So here we go, same thing, 10,000, let's just jump to do this to make it cleaner for you so you can see. So 10,000 monthly unique visitors, let's say your average cost, David, per click, and I know it varies across the country and by brand and who's doing it, whatever, I get that. But just for discussions, let's talk about the average cost per click is $3.50 in your market. And let's say you deploy a $5,700 budget. Okay, cool. Well, let's, because you want more traffic, right? You, you've reached out to your website, your, your SEM vendor, your marketing partner, and you said, hey, we need more traffic and let's focus on a digital strategy and a search engine marketing strategy to get us more traffic, right? Hypothetically, that's what you chose to do, okay? Well, if you spent 5,700 bucks at $3.50, you're gonna get an estimated new traffic of 1,629 visitors, estimated, right? And again, keep in mind, these would have to be visitors that had not already been on your website or wouldn't naturally come to your website organically or directly, what have you. You found these new 1,629 visitors in your market, you brought them to, this, to your site. At a 2% conversion rate, right? Now you're getting 33 leads. At a 10% lead to sale, you're getting three units sold. Your cost per unit is 1,750. You've sold three cars, mm. okay? All right, well, let's compare what happens if you use a conversion strategy against your existing 20% highly engaged visitors, right? So let's jump here. So let's compare that. So same thing, 10,000 monthly unique visitors. We know that 2,000 of them are your highly engaged visitors. Conversion rate, 2%, but we're gonna, we've got a tool now that's gonna do even better, right? And there's that tool, $1,000. So now you've got 40 leads instead of 33 leads. These leads, by the way, these, when you target a highly engaged visitor, correctly with the right type of incentive, they end up closing significantly higher. We have clients that have close rates in the 22, 23% range with the technology we use. Well, let's just say on average it's 15%, right? So now it's 15% and now you've got six deals instead of three. It costs you $166 per deal instead of $17.50. Look at the gains there, right? So significant gains when you focus on conversion rather than driving traffic. And by the way, when you focus on driving traffic, you are still left with the holes in your net. Can you do both? Can you convert more and drive traffic? Absolutely, right? They're not mutually exclusive. However, when you focus on converting more, you find that not only do you get better, higher quality leads, uh, it's more productive for your BDC, the BDC agents and your sales team, you find that maybe you don't need to invest as much. And in some cases, not at all in terms of driving more traffic, right? So converting traffic matters most. And there's a number of ways you can look at this. This is sort of a, a, cost, analysis against, a cost analysis against what it costs you to get the leads and then the cost per unit, et cetera. You can look at the opportunity gain, same concept, right? 20,000 monthly unique visitors, 20% of them are highly engaged, you got a 2% conversion rate. You're going to get 400 website leads. There are 3,600 unconverted opportunities, right? So remember the, the website failure rate. So if you won 400 out of 4,000, that means 3,600 are visiting your competitors and buying elsewhere or buying later or choosing not to buy at all. COVID forbid, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then your, your, your website lead close rate, 10%. That's 40 deals. Average gross per copy. Now you got total 80 grand gross. That's your that's a standard. But if you look at the gain when you focus on 
conversion, what happens is you've got the same number of unique visitors, you've, uh, uh, you've got the same number of highly engaged visitors, same conversion rate for your website, you got the same number of leads. However, this 720 that you ignore when you don't have a conversion strategy, now what we're doing is we're not ignoring them. We're gonna pick up that 2% rule. So we're gonna to try to gain 2% from the, that highly engaged visitor traffic. That gives us 80 more leads. Look at the lead count now. Look at the lead to sale count now and look at the total gross. Conversion matters more than driving traffic. It matters more than vanity metrics and, and spending time in Google Analytics. Conversion matters more. I'm not talking about Google Analytic conversion metrics. I'm talking about conversion from your website to a lead in your CRM tool. That matters more. By the way, uh, I want to point out something. Oftentimes when I talk to people about conversion, they say, well, great. Well, why don't I just serve a great incentive to every visitor on my website or put a big banner on every, you know, and, and just do something to get most uh, more of the visitors on my website to convert. I'll tell you why that's a problem. A few, few reasons. Number one, again, not all visitors are the same. Some visitors are there just checking out the color of a car. Some visitors might buy a car in a year. Some visitors are there, like I was uh, a week or so ago, looking at, at a product for one of my children that, that live across the country. Um, so not all visitors are the same. What happens though is unfortunately because the market still distrusts us as dealers, uh, and it's painful to say, and I know it's painful to hear, but they still distrust us. Um, they don't distrust you, David, all the other dealers. Um, and it, it hurts, people, but it's true, right? So what happens is when they see an incentive, they see an offer, they pocket that offer right away. They don't want it to go away, right? In case I buy from this guy, in case I come back in the market, I want this offer. Well, look at what happens when you serve an offer to every visitor, you end up overburdening your BDC with a bunch of leads that aren't going to respond to them or be slow to respond to them, thereby burning their time. And burning a BDC agent's time is one of the worst things that you can do. You think $3.50 per click is bad. The average cost for you, David, and every dealer across the country for a lead to be ingested into your CRM tool, just to put it in because of the processes that are going to happen afterwards, follow up email, follow costs you $7.20 on average. Payroll, insurance, floor space, phones, CRM tool, cubicles, the whole nine yards. When you, when you do that calculation, on average, it's $7.20 just to take a lead in. By the way, that's on the first follow-up, the second follow-up, the third follow-up, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you don't want to overburden your BDC and burn their time and then essentially waste more money. What you want to do is give them just high quality, highly engaged leads so that they can have close rates that are 15, 20, 25% or better, right? So that's, you can look at it in a number of ways. You can look at it in a cost analysis uh, and or you can look at it uh, in terms of opportunity analysis. So again, with the, with the example I gave you, $15,000 is a lot more than $2,000, seven times more. So the focus is converting more traffic. Keep in mind the 2% con the conversion rule. What I would do if I were you, David, and all the GMs, internet directors, marketing directors, is this is something I'd hang on your wall. Uh, because you're going to have conversations with, with well, vendors like me who for decades said, hey, you need to spend more money and drive more traffic. And I want you to, if anything, you take away is, go, wait a minute, yeah, I need more traffic, but can I improve my conversion rate? Can I give my BDC better than a 10% chance on average? And by the way, think about that too. Uh, it just occurred to me, I use by the way a lot. Um, think about that too, is that you have a BDC agent getting dressed up for work, getting all excited, getting fired up. They leave the house, they leave the kids, get in the car, drive all the way to your store, walk through the door in your showroom to have a 90% failure kind of day, right? To fail 90% of the time. So that's something to solve. And one way to solve that is to give them high quality leads that close at much higher rates than 10%. If you want to, if you want to increase anything, you want to increase the universe of leads that you have that close higher than 10%. I tell dealers all the time, hey, go through that inventory uh, summary list and look at all the lead sources that you have that close between 5% five, you know, 5 or lower. Get rid of those. Why? Because it gives your BDC agent time to work on the leads that matter most. And the leads that matter most, by the way, are also the leads that are visiting your competitors. There is, There are very, very very few stores that receive a lead that their competing brand didn't also get the same lead. Think about it for a second. 
you, most of your leads, David, would you agree your first party leads are, uh, most of them are sound something like, what's your best price? Yes. Okay. So it's, it is not possible in the human language to use the word best, use any language you want, Spanish, Asian, English, what have you. It's not possible to learn best from only one source, is it? When I ask you what your best price is and you tell me it's $20,000, I cannot know that's the best unless I do what? Shop. Ask the other dealer the same question. So when you get a best price question, you know for certainty they've asked your other vendors, your other partner, your other dealers. There's no question about it. It's not possible to say, hey, I think I got the best price. Well, where's the other one? That doesn't matter, honey, grab your purse, we're gonna go out here and buy. That doesn't happen, right? So what you want is you want, you, the reason, there are many reasons you want your BDC agents working on high quality leads, least of which is because they're gonna work on leads that have a higher close rate. Again, conversion matters most. Conversion matters more than driving traffic. Hopefully you've seen that today, David. Conversion matters more than attribution and analytics. We didn't talk about any of that today. We talked about more gross, more sales, and you don't need to, to, to run around saying, hey, gosh, my bounce rate is this low, or, I, or my conversion rate according to Bing or Google Analytics is XYZ, or I can see all the, that, that's, that's a distraction from what matters most. What matters most is that you convert more of the visitors than your competitors do. And what matters most is that your BDC or your sales team sell more of them than your competitors do. That matters most. And you, again, you have more traffic on your website than you know what to do with. So the, the idea is focus and convert there. And by the way, it's less expensive, right? Um, speaking of expensive, converting matters more than any digital ad spend you can have. That is now where I'd like to open up to you. So what we'll do now is Ron and I are gonna move to the live Q&A. I think everybody, and I've already had some people texting me, how, how does he do that? And and so when you talk about the active visitors and those that are more engaged, what's the strategy for engagement? Uh, in, in terms of the how, the technical piece yeah, of it? Technical. Okay. So without getting into our tool, and I, and I really don't want to invest too much time there, but we, we built a tool, as you've seen a little bit, uh, that leverages some machine learning to identify behaviors on a given website, right? And so not unlike Google and Yahoo and Bing that have Optimization, optimization strategies within their sort of inferential logic, we do the same and where we're looking at visitors' behavior. Little things like scroll depth, time, time, time on site, time away from site, number of returning visits, where they return, where they exited, nearly 242 different dimensions, if you will, that, that go into a machine learning platform. And because of that, our tool has the ability to say, hey, that person, yeah, they're probably gonna submit a lead, Let's leave them alone. That person, probably just a tire kicker. Let's ignore them. That person, their behavior uh, over the course of a, of a segment of time is indicative of somebody who's shopping multiple sites and trying to compare. We can actually see that behavior. That's when we say that's a highly engaged visitor, hasn't yet converted, most likely shopping the competition. Let's do what we know how to do back when we were in the showroom offer them an incentive, an intelligent incentive, a variety of different incentives to choose us rather than whomever they might be looking at or leaning towards. So that's one of the ways from a technical perspective that we identify highly engaged visitors on a website and then slow them down. One of the reasons we slow them down um, is that, you know, there, we have new vehicles sales and used vehicle sales, right, David? And when that buyer on your website gets to the 50, 60, 70% line uh, of their sort of lifetime, uh, not a lifetime, but shopping cycle, right? That whether it's 70 days, what have you. As they get halfway past that, um, they understand that they can get the same price of a particular vehicle, let's say a Honda Accord, uh, at dealer A, B, and C. They understand that late in the game because of things like map pricing, right? The, the OEM dictates what we can do online. So pretty soon, this, this intelligent consumer figures out, okay, the monthly payments are different on the various sites, but the price is the same. So they figure that out because the OEM causes price parity with new vehicles. The same happens with pre-owned, right? If you are, if you're a shopper looking for a specific 2012 vehicle, specific color, specific mileage, all those sorts of things, what you'll find as you go through your shopping cycle uh, is you'll find that the vehicle that is similar at dealer A and dealer B the pricing are, those prices are similar as well. Why? 
we all use inventory management tools like V Auto, First Look, AAX, et cetera, right? So the consumer figures out that, wait a minute, I can get the same price for the same car at dealer A, B, and C. Uh, dealer A, B, and C are equidistant to my home. Oh, and the reviews, it's crazy. Why do the reviews sound the same? Of course, dealers, we all know why the reviews sounded the same to the consumer, right? So now the consumer is saying all things being equal. And at that moment in time, if you can serve up the right incentive, you upset the balance, right? They go, ah, okay, this dealer is offering me X, Y, and Z. And that's dramatic compared to what I already know about the other dealers. So that's, that's a sort of long way of saying this is how our technical piece works. It looks at visitor behavior. We use things like engagement scores and those sorts of things to sort, sort of differentiate visitors. And then when appropriate, we serve an incentive. That's what we do. Cool. And that means Becky's got a question from the audience. Hit me, Becky. Yes. Uh, the question is, how do you determine whether you have a conversion problem versus a process problem? Oh, that's a really good question, right? So um, what you do for to identify a conversion problem, uh, and, and one is technical, so to speak, and the other one is more process, right? So what I would do is I would, I would say to my w website vendor, I would look at those analytics. I would look at the course of probably three or six months. I would look at the average monthly unique visitors in total that I have. And then I would look at all the leads, form fill leads, for example, uh, that came from that, that period for those websites, right? And I would have a, for those visitors. That would give me a number. That would give me a conversion number, right? And let's just say for discussion purposes that it's 2%. Um, okay, so now that's something I want to try to improve because it costs less to improve conversion than it does to drive more traffic. And that's if you could drive more quality traffic. The process issue is around converting those leads inside the BDC to a sale, right? So that process is about, okay, I've received the lead, my, the right BDC agent, by the right BDC agent, I mean they're trained, they're coached, they're motivated. They're using the same process. The right BDC agent is doing the right things to schedule the right appointment. Preferably, we have managers at the desk that are doing intelligent management confirmation calls. Uh, that's part of, that's a, probably the most critical piece of the process is not farming that job out to a BDC manager or some other manager, right? The best practice is, at least in my experience of what I've seen out in stores, is when sales managers take the time to do an intelligent management confirmation call because what happens then is that increases your show rate and then the rest falls in place. So as your, your question um, is sort of bifurcated, which is one is a technical issue on our website, what can we do that is credible and sustainable, right? You can offer any kind of message. It may not be credible. Um, five, $5,000 any vehicle this weekend. That's not credible. Uh, and it's certainly not sustainable, but you'd get a lot of conversion that month, right? So that one issue is how do you technically convert more? And then the other side of the equation is once you've converted those native first party leads, how do you ensure that you're following the right processes so that you're getting close rates that are 15, 17, 18, and 20% higher? Hopefully that answers that question. Yeah. Becky? I have another one and you may have just answered it, but uh, another question came in, what's a good website conversion rate for a high line dealer? Wow, um, I don't know. Um, I do know that whatever it is, you can do better, right? I'm being funny. Um, so the, the dimensions are varied. There are high line dealers in the middle of the country, uh, you know, 100 miles away from a, a major metro. Um, they're gonna, that website's gonna convert significantly higher, right? Because people aren't willing to make the long drive into town, what have you. Um, so for example, pick a place like uh, uh, Lake Tahoe, you might have a Highline dealer there and that, that shopper isn't necessarily gonna wanna make the, you know, the 80 mile hour drive, 80 miles hour drive down to Sacramento or what have you. So you'd find that that website converts higher. Uh, conversely, um, there are things that happen in a metro where all dealers are sort of located in one area and it's sort of convenient, where, where, where the, the online shopper will sort of take that for granted. So uh, the thing to do is measure, right? As dealers, we all know that. Uh, I'm not a dealer, I apologize for saying it that way. Uh, as dealers, you all know that, is measure where you are and then decide if it requires improvement. I would say that if your website is converting anywhere less than 
truthfully converting, you know, scientifically measuring the number, anything less than 6%, you can certainly do better, even if you already have conversion platform tools. Many of our clients have uh, many different conversion platform tools and we augment them, right? So we coexist with them because our technology allows the website and the other CRM tools to do their part or the other, other conversion tools to do their part. And then when those fail, our technology kicks in. So uh, I would say the first thing to do is measure it um, and say, okay, great. I've got X number of monthly visitors. Uh, and of that, I've got X number of form fill conversions. And what's that number? Most likely it's going to be somewhere in the 1.7 to 2.2%. And you can easily convert that. Uh, you can easily drive that higher. Excellent. So Ron, uh, we'll end up getting more questions for you and, and sending those over. I can't thank you enough. Um, I had a lot of comments coming through that it looks like a good smart technology and, and uh, people will certainly be reaching out to you to do a demo because uh, when you did that spreadsheet and you laid out the, the uh, return on investment and how that works, uh, that was quite impressive. So thank you very much.